Welcome people, thank you so much. While they, we all getting connected and, and settled, I must say this is a very huge platform and uh, you know, a hard act to follow, especially after the lecture that was given by um, Professor Mtukuzi. It's, 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 it's so amazing and it's a very pertinent question to ask, how do you measure uh, the success of a man or woman for that matter? And I realized that ever since the program started, just men were talking. So now this is our time. Let me show you. And we're taking it to where it belongs. And yet, I have to say thank you very much, firstly, to Wright Associate for approaching uh, UJ, especially the Faculty of Humanities, because if you notice around the world, uh, a lot of uh, ed departments of education have, ta have taken humanities out of the curriculum and are selling science and mathematics and engineering and all of those for profits, really, because it, really everyone is, is, is seriously considering the economy of the country and the quick fix is science and technology and, of course, mathematics. But does that solve our problems? And this is why we don't have the likes of Huma Sekela in, in, in our generations and the future generations, because we need holistically grown human beings. You, you need creativity and humanities and, and engineering and science and medicine and all of those. So I, I really congratulate the University of Johannesburg for even agreeing to this annual lecture because I think a lot more of our students need to understand more about humanities and probably take it to where it's supposed to be. So congratulations to them. I think they did a good job. This is not my platform, really. There are respondents. Um, our one-time ambassador to America, Sis Barbara Masekela, on, on stage. And what, what is it? Masekela? I didn't know this. Masekela. Masekela. OK, that's what it is. Why did it wait for so long for me to get it? And Miss Mazwai, and I, I love the, the difference in age, because then we're going to talk about today and how it used to be. Um, a lot of things were said, but I think I want to talk about really how we define the qualities of a good man and a good woman. Because I think we need to start talking about women. So the character is what uh, Professor Mtuguzi mentioned, uh, respect for yourself. And I'm not going to even begin to tell my story about Hugh Masekela. And I think we all have stories to tell. Um, but I think right now, I'd love to hear your responses. And we'll start with you, Sis Barbara. Uh, your responses to the lecture itself. My response to the lecture. Can I've we, never hear, can we hear Sis Barbara, please? Can the sound people please come Kevin. in? OK, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I'd also like to congratulate the University of Johannesburg for inaugurating this lecture series, not because it's named after my brother, but because it's a good thing. Because I think our my response would be to the lecture itself. Because I think in my generation, uh, people who were musicians, or poets, or actors, or painters, or sculptors, were really <coughs> not people. They, they were playing. They were enjoying themselves. They were not respected. Uh, and uh, they were not viewed as people who could raise a family. So I think that for this lecture to be named after Hugh Masekela is a hope that not only the lecture series, but some of the halls, you know, where the students live and the, you know, where they listen to lectures, that those two would be named 
after ma, uh, after people in the arts mm -hmm. who have made a great contribution. Before I go on, I must say that, you know, as a sibling, I'm really feeling tired and sick because there's been too much praise here. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, really. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> I kind of, I don't know where to start, you know, but I actually think that my brother's character is more fit for a roast. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. Than a, 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 you know, a scholarly lecture. Roasts are also very scholarly. <laughs> because he, my brother is 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 larger than life. Mm -hmm. You know, he he he's not easy to pin down, and he's many things. And I'm afraid he's shown you the good side only. <laughs> but we won't go into the other thing. We'll keep it public. <laughs> Okay, on a more serious note, I think that also we should acknowledge, uh, as I said before, artists of the past. There were many artists as we were growing up who are not well known to us at all. One of them was our father, Thomas Masekela. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, let's drop that. I was doing the American. <laughs> let, let, let's just. <laughs> Let's just drop it. <laughs> I'm doing the American accent, sorry. <laughs> Our father, Thomas Masekela. Uh, we grew up, uh, as some of you know in, uh, from Hugh's book, in a home where art reigned supreme. So we did know about the other artists of that era, like Makubela, like Sikoto, uh, um, Manoba. We knew of all the artists because my father knew them and he admired them. So Hugh's love of musicians and music and creative people and generous people is something that he learned in our home. Mm -hmm. And um, he could not have been anything but what he, he is. But it's because we were raised in a home where art, I think one of the first words we learned was design. Wow. You know? We didn't know what it meant, but something called design, you know. Uh, uh, the grain of the wood. Uh, uh, we, you know, all of those things we learned uh, at home as children. We learned about writing, poetry, you know. Uh, we learned about music. Uh, we learned about architecture. Anything creative, we learned about it. And our parents were also very, very humanistic people. They worked with people. My dad was a health inspector. My mom was a social worker. So we grew up, you know, when we were growing up in the townships, if you had a chair and if your father uh, had a, a car, they used to say, Barich. <laughs> Uh, they were like, Barich, give an aspect there, you know. Um, but also, that was not only for my family only, it was also for all families. There was great respect for education. Sister so, Barbara, can I, Sister Barbara, uh, can I interrupt here? Because you, you, you're touching up on, on very important sure. issues mm -hmm. about how we continue. Oh, 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 Professor Mutuguzi spoke about a challenge of the Western culture taking over our culture. 
and you're mentioning some very real and root problems there. How do we then make sure that we have a definition, as Hugh has been described now, mm -hmm. that continues among our younger generation mm -hmm. through music, through the arts, through design, and through all of the things we're talking about today? How do we make sure that it becomes an intrinsic part of our lives as we continue today with all our challenges? Uh, are you not going to answer that? I am, but I'd like to give the okay, youth a chance. Nomsa? Nomsa. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Youth before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's I'll take that one. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of time now. <laughs> um, you know, for me, you know, when I was listening to um, Papa Tuku speak here, you know, and, uh, you know, he raised some points, you know, when he was describing, you got to hear he was saying, um, you have to overcome things, you have to have respect for self, respect for others, ad your attitude to life, and how, um, and how much you give back. And I kept thinking to myself, today, you know, in South Africa, what, what, is, what defines a great, a great woman or a, what are the qualities of a great woman or a great man? And I just started thinking about where we are as a people, post-apartheid society. Um, and when, when I think about how we treat each other, how we are, I think um, of a book that I read, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, and how, you know, how, we, how we relate to each other. Are we empowering each other? Are we growing each, um, each other? And for me, I feel that there's almost a death of consciousness. And I like the fact that Dr. Hugh doesn't like weaves. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because one of, the, one of the, those, you know, a weave is indicative of that death of consciousness, of knowing who you are, of understanding, um, of understanding your worth. Um, um, and, I, and I also think about South Africa right now as, as a nation of conspicuous consumers. We're just buying, but we're not really, that's, that's what we're doing. Um, and I also have a sense that we have a, almost a self-hatred um, when we're dealing with each other. So for me, I, I started thinking about the need for a developmental attitude. And Dr. Dugut spoke about it a little bit when he spoke about the ball, about when your child kicks a ball into the, into the, into the window, that you say, wow, you're going to be a great soccer player, you know? And I think these are the things that, that's what we need in South Africa the most. Because we've been so de dehumanized as a people that we just need to remind each other that we're human and we're beautiful and we're great. And I think we need to do that more. So for me, that, that you know, for me, how we keep the spirit of, uh, how we keep that spirit alive, you know, if I were to wrap it up, I'd say, we have to empower people to overcome the situations that they are in. We have to empower people and remind people that, that they should respect themselves. And how do we do that? By respecting them, by treating them well, by reminding them you're black and you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're clever. English doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, about kumshi, it doesn't mean that you've been downgraded in life. Um, you need to remind people that they need to respect others because that is how you get further in life. Um, you, need to, you, need to, you need to inspire people to have an excellent attitude to life. Um, you know, I know in South Africa, if I were to take, take what Tati Tuku said, it's Zaku Presa. <laughs> but, but, you know, we have to remind people to Hazvina Kupresa. Hazvina Kupresa. Hazvina Kupresa. Kupresa. And, 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 you know, when we leave people, when you walk away from a person, I think, just like you said, Papa Tuku, they should really be thinking to themselves, now how can I do this thing? that this person just did for me, to give me back my humanity, to give me my, back my love of life. How can I do that for the next person? So for me, that would be um, how I would, uh, that's uh, my attitude as a young person in South Africa. That's fantastic. That is really, really. I, I, Sister Barbara, I need to, while you answer that question as well, I need to, because the, it seems that our own dignity has been eroded as a people. And you know, everything, the weaves and all of that comes after us trying to be someone else or imaging ourselves against other people. So how, how do we get back to that knowing who we are in the real true sense of the word and, and, and talking about that character that, oh, 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 that Dugu spoke about, you know, because 
it, 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 the whole idea is about building character and that's how you define a man and a woman by the character that they are and I suppose that then you know builds the rest of the uh, of, of your person and your uh, and the nation that and community in fact well I, I you know I, I have to keep on going back to Hugh because you know he is the subject here and I I, I think you know, the, the one time he recorded a, um, I don't know whether it was the album or a song, and it was entitled, I Am Not Afraid. Um. And to me, I have always said, you know, thought that uh, that is the, the reigning description, you know, the operative description I would give of you that he is not afraid and I I think that uh, and I'm not praising him because there are some things he ought to have been afraid of <laughs> that he was not afraid of <laughs> look back because the conditions of the of the past mm. have passed. We're yeah. here now. Yes. Personally at 74 I want to be here. Yeah. You know, because this is where I am and this is where we are operating. And I would like to see a situation where we teach our children not to be afraid. Mm. Because fear breeds a lot of evil. Mm -hmm. Whether you look at it socially, politically, you know, economically, fear breeds a lot of negativity, mm. you know. And I think, again, to go back to our parents, there was no hope for them, yeah. you know. They did not have the constitution, they did not, you know, but they taught us not to be afraid, mm. 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 you know. So we did not have to cover our fear in knowledge about movie stars or singers, mm. you know, our fashion, because we were not afraid, we created it where we were, uh, because we were not afraid, we dared, you know. Uh, 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 uh. You know, I, I tell you a story. I tell people this all the time. You go to New York, you go to Lagos, you go to, you go to Amsterdam, any European capital, you will find Africans there driving taxis, selling takeys in the street, doing something, you will not find a South African. <laughs> <laughs> you will not. You know, you will find uh, uh, people from all over the world, everywhere in the capitals, trying to make a living, you know. But, all I can say is that we should have a prize that for the next South African who wants to go and start a business in Lagos, you know, in the streets of Lagos, we should give him a prize. <laughs> <laughs> and that is being venturesome and not being afraid. Mm. And I think I could say that the lesson we as family have learned from Hugh is that we should not be afraid, mm. you know, and it's a great uh, 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 lesson, you know, and I think it's something that our country needs to know, that we are free now, so we must not be afraid. Mm. We must not be afraid when things are done in our name, you know, we should say, no, not in my name. I, this will not be done in my name. Mm -hmm. uh, we must not be afraid to, 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 when we are standing in the queue forever and somebody is not attending. You know, I, I go to restaurants with my sons and I just, my sons go, oh, there she goes again. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah, you must not be afraid, you know, you, where you go, you know, because you deserve to be where you are, yes. mm -hmm. you know. So, so, well done. So, so then how, how, how do we teach, how do we continue to teach these lessons and, and celebrate the legacy that you is giving us? And, 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 and spread it across because, you know, some people listen to Hugh's music and they dance to it and, and, and sing even to the lyrics without, without getting the message. And some people read the book and find funny bits and not get the message. So how do we make this lecture work and these annual lectures and make sure that young people like yourself get it and discuss it and take it further and, and, and the words that Mrs. Barbara has just shared with us now, because we can't just gather here today and all of us agree on what Hugh has, has, has given us as a legacy. But how do we make sure then that we, we take these lessons across and forward? Well, for me, um, I think it's definitely will speak to curriculum, you know, changing our own <coughs> curriculum so that that's the message we're communicating to young people at a young age from school. I mean, the music that you've made, that it's music that can play in a kindergarten, it can play in standard five, can play in matric. And it's music that empowers, it's music that young people can be proud of. And we have to have these images. Young people have to see this. They have to see, they have to see the possibility. I've just, come, I've just been working in the Eastern Cape in a, in a, in a, in a rural community. Utadu, he came to visit us there, Mtonjeni, and it was so lovely. Um, but, you know, the project there, one of the, one of the best things about it is that it's introduced possibility. People now understand that you can do anything, you know, and anything is possible. And it, it also makes me think about what happened in Parliament, you know. Um, I'm not saying I'm an AFF supporter or not, but it was, I think it was very good that it happened. Because South Africans must start saying when you, when you have a problem with something, you need to answer. There is a constitution and we want you to pay back the money. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag. Pay it back. I don't, I don't want to hand me because we, But we're scared. That's the thing. We are so scared. We are so scared. You're scared to say anything because it's so easy for you to be targeted. As an individual, it's easy for somebody to get numb, someone's wife. It's very easy for a person to decide that they're going to get that person. But that's only at the beginning, you know? At the beginning, it's easy to get a numb. So, but if all of you join and we stand for what is right and what is true, and I think South Africans really, I mean, Mama, that's such a great thing. We must stop being scared because we are very scared. I know even myself, the day I tweeted, paid back the money, I looked at my tweet for a very long time and I thought, actually, December could be very dry. <laughs> you know, but we have to be fearless. This is our, our South Africa. It's our Africa. Doesn't belong to anybody but all of us. And we all have to make sure that it's a South Africa that we all envisaged what it would be in the future. And I think Right at this moment in time, honestly, I really do believe this. This is the moment where we define the future, where we decide this is how it's going to be. And if we sit back and we let things happen, then that's how it's going to be. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's very really inspiring what you said about not being scared. I've always had, I'm, I am a scared person, even though people don't think I am. <laughs> nah, nah, I, don't look, I don't look like I'm a scared person. I'm scared for a minute and then I face it, you know? At least I've been taught to face it, or well, it's a lesson that I'm learning now. Um, but but that, would be, that would be, I think that, would, that, 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 that I would definitely concur. Let's stop being afraid. Let's so, take it. Legacies, Barbara? Uh, how, how do we spread this across? Because one of the things that were mentioned today is the challenges of the Western culture overtaking our culture. And Hugh has resisted that, and they mentioned the fact that he's always called South Africa his home. What can we learn from that? How do we make everyone feel the pride of, of, of being a South African and doing the right thing when, when in, in our daily lives and even wherever we go in our work? You know. Well, I think that you know one of the things that you do, you know, you have to think about is that it's not magic. You know, 
Uh, it's like when we got freedom in South Africa, people said th that we had performed a miracle. It was not a miracle, you know. Mm. And, and, and even these, this, what we are talking about, it, it's not magical. And, and one of my brother's uh, uh, ambitions throughout his life, you know, a, a sing song, was, was, has always been the necessity to create places where people can learn about African culture, where people can practice African culture, where people can uh, uh, create new African culture. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, and, and you know, it's easy for us to, to sit and, and talk, but you know, the reality is, is that if we look at our communities, uh, um, we have to be really honest and say, how many of those children have ever ridden a bicycle? How many of them have been to the cinema? You know, how many of them have ever seen a circus? All of those are culture. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and, and I think when I say African culture, I say African culture not only in the past, but in the here and now, mm -hmm. you know. African uh, experience. And I think we should endeavor to create the conditions where we are so that we can broaden the minds of the new generation about the existence of this. You cannot continue painting a woman with a baby on her back, another one with her hand, you know, uh, you know, care and then, you know, the woman is carrying something. You cannot. You know, you cannot keep on regurgitating the same images, the same phrases. Uh, we have to be creative and in order to do that, we have to broaden the minds of all our people, all our people, especially our children. So I'm saying where we are, we have to create the conditions that will make it possible to create a new generation. But we have to create those institutions. In, 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 in the school, in the afternoon, the children can go and look at a movie so that they, they don't feel sorry for themselves in Jabulani, saying, oh, I'm poor, I don't know. They should be able to see another child who lives in Mali or who lives on the streets of India. You know, they should see that. Because the great thing that we learned, because we were rejecting apartheid and we yearned for something better, which we thought was overseas, you know, it was not in Ghana or not. It was overseas, you know, we yearned for it. But we were very lucky because when we did get overseas, we came into contact with other, with people from the diaspora, you know, uh, uh, who had lived overseas and who relayed the reality of that to us. And we found that actually, in relation to who we were, we were, no, we were regarded no differently from how we were, where we had run away from. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's important for, for our youth to be exposed to those experiences. We haven't. We just keep on saying Ubuntu, Ubuntu, this, Ubuntu, but we, we don't expose our, our children to comparative experiences, to let them see themselves through the lens, lens of humanity, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, so, you know, I mean, I can go, I used to be a teacher. By okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you've said that, I'm enjoying this so much, and I'm sure we'll have little discussions amongst ourselves, but I'm told that uh, SAFM is very hungry to talk to uh, our Professor Mtuguzi and Huma Sikel and a few other people, so we cannot continue with this conversation on this platform like this, but I'm sure um, um, we'll be told what to do. 
But just a few words of closing, Sis Barbara and, and Nomsa. So is it beauty before youth or youth? <laughs> <laughs> and very, very briefly. And I'm very brief. Very um, brief. I just, all, I, all I can say, it's been such an honor to be here as a young person, to be somebody that's actively changing the world, changing my South Africa, making it what I dream, making it what I believe. You've made such a contribution in my life. Um, we spent all of one day together. <laughs> and, you know, you really made me imagine possibilities and not think about the limits, but to think about where I can go, how I can do, how I can grow. And I think all young people need to take that from you. And we need to live it. And we need to, we, we need, we need to let your life inspire who we want to be in the future. So I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you. You wipe off that respectable <laughs> expression <laughs> of your face and just be yourself. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It, it, it's, it's so wonderful. I've been so lucky to have a brother like you um, uh, and to have other men in my life like my father, my uncles and so on, you know, uh, uh, who taught us that, you know, we come from a great family, but that doesn't mean that other families are lesser. Of course. That whoever your name is, where you come from, you must remember that, you know, because you come from an, a, a, a group of people, you know, who are important because they are linked to other people, not because they are rich or what, but because they are linked to other people. But I've also been very lucky because my brother, unlike most men, is very clever, you know. <laughs> uh, he's, very, he's very witty, you know. And you know, when we were growing up also in, uh, in the townships, like wit, it was something that you aspired to. You know, you didn't all speak this. You, you aspired to saying something original that other people would repeat. You know, and I've been very lucky that my brother always, you know, and he is very lucky because he had a very clever sister. <laughs> I mean, that, was kind of that he had to make sure I didn't overtake him. But, but no, but seriously, you know, um, I, I think that, um, I was saying in the car when we were coming that we should give you a big birthday present. And what we need to do is to make a poster and gift it to you of all the musicians that he has played with oh, all wow. over the world. How do you do? Because he has truly, he loves music and he loves musicians, and he has given his life to that, you know, and, 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 and it's something great, you know, it makes you ignore all the other things. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Hugh, and, um, you know, thank what you. can I say, thank you. <laughs> Oh my goodness.